Hey there, community kids. Welcome back to another week of our kids mini service. We're so glad you're here. Miss Kelly is back with us to talk about God and him being compassionate. And it is an awesome story you won't want to miss. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore.
yourself Do not merely listen to the word And so deceive yourself Hey, hey, do what it says Do, 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 just do it Do what it says Oh yeah, oh yeah Do what it says Do, 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 just do it Do what it says Do what it says Just do it All right, try this with us Goes like this Community kids, I have got another story from the Big God story that I want to share with you today. And this story is an amazing story, and it's all about compassion. Do you guys know that word compassion? It's kind of a big word. We hear it, but do you know what it means? Do you understand the whole thing when someone says, be compassionate? Well, I'm going to tell you, because I was looking it up, because I wasn't really sure how to explain it either. Compassion is when you see someone that's struggling and having a hard time, and you feel bad about it. You feel sad for their struggle and their trouble. But you don't just stop there with your feelings. You put it into action. That's what compassion it is. It's seeing someone struggling and with a trouble and then letting that feeling of sadness compel you into action and doing something. And that is what we're going to be learning about today is compassionate. And we're going to learn that God is compassionate. So um, our verse this month also talks about that. So before I forget to tell you about it, we're going to play that video. Listen for the word compassionate in that video and know that God is compassionate and put that verse in your head and your heart. So here's the video. Psalm 145, 8. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Slow to anger. And rich in love such a great verse and I really hope you stick it in your head you stick it in your heart and you let it change you and that you let today's big God story change you too so let me get to the beginning of our story the story is found in two books of the Bible it is found in Matthew and it is also found in John both of those guys were there when this happened and they both wrote the story down and they tell different details so that's what we're going to look at both of them both what Matthew had to say and what John has to say Matthew talks about what happens kind of before this story which is important to know and it's really sad what happens before the story I'm going to tell you you see Jesus has a cousin. Do you guys have cousins? I have lots of cousins, and I love to do stuff with them. And cousins are just fun. They're wild, they're crazy, and you do lots of dumb things with them, and it's great. Well, Jesus had cousins too because he was human, and he had a cousin named John. We call him John the Baptist, right? And he was just a few months um, different in age than Jesus. And on this story, we find out that John has been killed. He dies. And not like old age dies. He's just the same age as Jesus. He dies because an evil king kills John the Baptist. And Jesus gets this news and he is just like, oh. I mean, can you imagine? What if we got that news that something happened to one of our cousins? And it didn't just happen like an accident. Someone did it on purpose. It would be crushing. And Jesus felt that weight. He felt that like terrible sadness. And he's like, okay. We, what am I going to do? You know what Jesus did? The Bible says, when he got this news, he went out and found some place quiet. When Jesus had heard what had happened, he withdrew by a boat privately to a solitary or quiet place. So now you have Jesus in his boat, right? He's going out to be alone. Do you guys ever go out on boats? I like to go out on boats. I don't do it very often, but I like to. He's out and it's quiet. And we can take a little lesson from this because Jesus, although God, still human, faced this really horrible time in his life, he knew he needed to go out someplace quiet and spend some time with God. You and I, when we face hard times and troubles, we need to do that too. But if I'm going to be honest, sometimes I don't go someplace quiet when trouble comes. 
Sometimes I go to my phone and I go and I search through Pinterest and just fill my brain with junk. Or I go and just watch TV and veg out. Or sometimes I grab Cheetos and a Coke and I just have a bunch of junk food to deal with my struggles. But you know what? That's not what Jesus did and it's not what we need to do. When we face hard times and struggles, we need to go someplace quiet and talk to God. Now you might not have a a boat or a pond in your backyard. So you might not be able to go boating like Jesus did. But you can go to your bedroom. You can go for a walk, go climb a tree. Just go somewhere quiet and talk to God when you have a hard day. That's what Jesus did, and it's a great lesson for us, okay? So that's what Jesus is doing. He's out having some quiet time with God because it was a rough day, man. You don't just get that news and keep going. That shakes you up. So Jesus is out quiet and talking to God. But while he's out in his boat, having quiet time, there's the shore over there, and people see Jesus in the boat. And they like are like, oh, that's Jesus. And they start following the boat from the shore. First, there was probably a couple people, and then they're like, oh, what are they looking at? And they're like, oh, it's Jesus. And then there's more people, and more people, and more, and more, and more. And now the crowd is getting huge that's following his boat on the shore. So by the time Jesus gets to the shore, there is tons of people, you guys. And I'm not talking like, oh, 10, 15, 50, or 100. The Bible says there is 5,000 men, not including their wives and their children. So this is a huge, huge crowd, more than can fit in church, you guys. This is huge. And he gets off the boat, and there's all these people. Now, you and I, Like if we had that kind of day and then we see all these people and we're like, you know what, wow, it's been a rough day. I'm going to take the day off and I'll come back to these people that want to see me maybe tomorrow or even next week because I'm having a rotten day. But Jesus, he's not us, is he? He sees the people and he has our word that we're talking about today. He has compassion on the people. He puts his own feelings aside and says, look at these people. They have needs. And I want to have compassion on them and help them. So he does. The Bible says Jesus spends time healing people. Maybe there were deaf people and he helped them be able to hear. Maybe there was someone who couldn't walk and he healed them so they could walk off. Man, that would have been so incredible to see. There may have been, oh, maybe there was some blind people, right? And he helped them be able to see. He did tons of things. Maybe... Maybe there was some kid that fell out of a tree and hit his head and needed help that no one else could give him, and God was able to heal his injury. We don't know. Maybe there was someone who had a hurt hand, right? Maybe it's always been hurt. Maybe it got ran over by a horse, and it was all crippled. Then Jesus was, like, able to heal it and make it better. But he spends all this time having compassion on the people and healing them. It was just amazing. And we could end the story right there with Jesus healing the people, showing compassion. Boom, we've got a great lesson on compassion, don't we? But the Bible doesn't stop the story there. There's even more to the story on compassion. So Jesus is healing the people. It's getting later in the day, and they've already walked how far to get to where he landed in the boat. And the disciples are like, hey, Jesus, we know you're healing people, but uh, maybe you should send them home so they could eat. I mean, because they've walked really far, and they're in the middle of nowhere. There's no stores to go by. And, and Jesus is like, hmm, how about you feed them? That's what he says to his disciples. How about you feed them? And I want to know how many of the disciples rolled their eyes and started to laugh. Like, really? Look around. We're in the middle of nowhere. There's no grocery stores. There's no market. And the one disciple's like, hey, even if we did have a grocery store nearby, I'd have to work like six months to give everybody a nibble. They were just like, what? You know, I, I, I would have been with them too, like, I don't know, this is ridiculous and impossible. But so they're talking with Jesus, and while they're talking, apparently a couple of the other disciples went out to ask the people, like, anybody have any food? Anybody have any food? And here's what they come back with. So we know that there's a group of like 5,000 people, and they found one kid with a lunch. Can we just give some applause to that mom? Right? One mom and this whole crowd packed their kid a lunch. I don't know what happened to the rest of them, but they found one lunch in the crowd. And so they're like, Jesus, we found this lunch. And so... Right, they got the kid's lunch bag. Do you think he had a McDonald's bag? Probably not. But, and they're like, the napkins. Mom packed him napkins. That's awesome. And they're like, all right, Jesus, you got 5,000 men and, and then all their wives to feed. And we have two chicken and biscuit sandwiches. Hmm. And, oh, this is Daisy. Five pancakes with syrup, okay? 
So they're like, there you go, Jesus. That's what we've got. We've got two chicken sandwiches and five pancakes. Okay, in the story, it wasn't really chicken and pancakes, but McDonald's doesn't have fish, so that's what you get in the story. It was really two fish and five loaves of bread. But in our story, it's two chicken sandwiches and five pancakes. So they take that to Jesus, and I don't know what they were thinking, because that clearly isn't going to work. But Jesus takes these things, he prays over them, and he says, now pass it out. And this is the part my mind does not understand, because even if we took all this food, and we passed it out. That's like seven items. We're going to get to seven people. If we gave everyone a half a sandwich or a half a pancake, we've made it to 14 people. And we know they fed thousands. So how it worked is nothing but, it's a miracle. Like, and I don't know, how do you like have this many and suddenly have more? It, I don't, did they like magically go and just like pop up and there was more and more? I have no idea. But Jesus knew these people had a need. They were hungry, and there was no place to get food nearby. He had compassion on them, and he made this little boy's lunch feed 5,000 men plus their wives and their children. You guys, look at this. Like, I would be, this would feed probably one and a half of my children. (laughs) Not 5,000 and a crowd. But Jesus did it. He did it. And then he's like, all right, disciples, now go gather up the leftovers. And I don't know if I was a disciple, I'd be like, leftovers? Really? Because we didn't have enough to begin with. How would there be leftovers? But guess what? They go out, they obey Jesus, because that's what you do. You obey even if it doesn't make sense sometimes. And they collected one, two, three, four, five, six baskets of leftovers. And then they went some more and they got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve baskets of leftovers, guys. Look at, just imagine all those baskets full of chicken sandwiches and pancakes. It would be an epic day. The smell would be like, oh wow, amazing. And that's what happened. There were twelve baskets of leftover goodies, you guys. Because Jesus had compassion on the people, and he had so much compassion that there was leftovers for the people. So today, remember that word, compassion, because God is compassionate. He showed compassion to the people in the story. He healed them when he was having a rough day. He fed them with essentially nothing, and he took care of them. He had compassion on them. But the compassion of God doesn't end with that story in the Bible. There's you and me, that same compassion he showed those people, he shows you, and he shows me. So that's what I want you to remember. One, that God is compassionate to you and me. Two, I want you to know that that compassion that God shows us, we need to show to the people around us. We need to have a heart that has that kind of compassion, that sees a friend having a rough day or a stranger having a rough day, and we go, that's not okay. I want to do something about it. And the third thing I want you to know and remember is just like Jesus went someplace quiet to talk with God, when you're struggling and having a rough day, you do that too. Have that quiet time. Let God give you his compassion, and that's going to help you give others compassion as well. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are compassionate. You see our struggles. You know the hard times and the difficult things we go through. And you are there with us. And you want to help us in those situations. You did miraculous things in today's story. You healed people who needed compassion and healing. You fed them, God, with just a little itty bitty lunch. And just like you did amazing things then, you still do amazing things now. So I just pray that these kids would trust you for that, God. And they would go to you, find those quiet places in their house or outside and talk to you and tell you what's going on. And then listen and see how you show compassion to them. May each of the children know that you love them, God, and are with them wherever we go. Thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. So that's our story today, guys, of the big God story of Jesus showing compassion to the people, and he still shows compassion to you and to me today. See you guys later. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We're so glad you came to one of our kids' mini services. We'll be back next week. Have a great week.